Hello and welcome to the DARPA Launch Challenge. I'm Mike Curie and we're at the home of Astra in Alameda, California. And we started today a little bit late because the launch time is going to be pushed back slightly. Uh, launch controllers are looking at the data that they've received for potential collision avoidance. Uh, and this is something that happens with virtually every rocket launch. So they have delayed launch by a little bit in order to avoid any such uh, type of incident. We'll be telling you more about that as we go along. We'd like to start today, however, by kind of looking back at all the activity that has happened over the last two weeks. The DARPA launch challenge is really a sprint, and it was designed that way to test the ability to rapidly respond to a launch request from virtually anywhere. A whole lot has happened in a really short time, going from a bare concrete pad to a fully ready launch infrastructure in less than two weeks, culminating in today's launch attempt. Going in, the weather was yeah, going to be problematic. You had everybody here. You don't give up on a possible launch opportunity. Yeah, I think the rocket was ready. The winds were not looking good. The trigger lightning, thick clouds were not looking good, but always useful to count because you never know what's going to happen. We had a wet dress rehearsal yesterday that went pretty well. And were it not for weather, we'd probably be on our way to orbit right now. It truly has been a launch challenge with unusually uncooperative weather in Alaska that's forced DARPA and Astra to postpone the launch attempt till today. On Saturday, Astra validated all of its rocket systems, including loading and propellants and counting all the way down to the T-minus 15 minute mark, which would have been the start of the terminal count. However, earlier in the day, the decision was made to postpone launch because the upper level wind and the thick cloud rules were both out of limits and they were certain to remain that way throughout the launch window. On Sunday, high surface winds that were out of launch rule limits were among the weather factors that led again to DARPA and Astra postponing launch until today. 
Today, the weather conditions are more favorable. The only item that is not 100% green is upper level winds. The weather forecasters are showing a 70% probability of violation. However, that is a constraint that is something that Astra and all rocket companies take into account. They run models with the uh, winds coming from particular directions at particular speeds, and they validate the ability of their rocket to control itself as it goes through that atmosphere. That's something that Astra will be doing today, and uh, we'll have to wait to hear from them, and uh, we presume that uh, we will hear if that is a constraint as we get further into the count. But uh, as of now, weather is far better than it has been for the last week or so. Today, Astra is going to try to meet the goals of the DARPA Launch Challenge, which is to successfully carry a payload into low Earth orbit from Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska, on Kodiak Island. Successfully reaching orbit today will earn Astra a $2 million DARPA Launch Challenge prize and set the company up for Launch 2, with that campaign just days away for a chance at an additional $10 million. The launch window today opens at 11.30 a.m. Alaska time, 12.30 p.m. Pacific time. We're not going to launch at the opening of the launch window today, which extends for three hours. Again, the uh, launch team is setting a little bit later time to avoid the potential of a collision with something that's already in space. This happens all the time. It's nothing to worry about. It's the right thing to do. And when we know the new launch time, we will pass it on to you. Astra Rocket 1 of 3 on the launch pad in Alaska is the first of Astra's Rocket 3.0 series. Rockets 1.0 and 2.0 were built in the jet engine test facility next door to where we are. Rocket 3.0 was built entirely in the factory facility behind me. The rocket is 11.6 meters tall, 1.32 meters in diameter, or 38 feet tall and 4.3 feet in diameter. And Astra has a fully containerized launch system with an ultra low cost aluminum structure and with battery powered pump fed liquid oxygen and RPX engines. At the launch pad, all of the equipment you see at Pacific Spaceport Complex Alaska Area 3, the rocket, the launch cube, and two electronic carts were shipped from Astra in Alameda, California to Kodiak in four 40-foot containers, some by sea and some by air, but all in the past two weeks. On the rocket, there are five Delphin engines on stage one, providing a combined total thrust of 6,000 pounds. The name Delphin is taken from a dolphin-like Greek sea god. The single upper stage engine is named Ether, after the pure upper sky air breathed by Greek gods. The Ether engine generates 700 pounds of thrust. Inside the first stage, the liquid oxygen tank is on top and the fuel tank is on the bottom. For this Rocket Series 3.0, engineers also overhauled the avionics and switched to a common dome design between the liquid oxygen and propellant tanks. About an hour before launch time, a computer auto sequence initiated the loading of propellant and liquid oxygen oxidizer, along with helium, which pressurizes the fuel tanks. Data from the rocket after launch will be downloaded to two separate dishes at Kodiak, one belonging to Astra and the other to Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska. The dishes will be able to acquire data from the rocket through the entire ascent phase and the deployment of the payloads. With spacecraft separation planned to be very low on the horizon from Kodiak, though, and a potential for loss of signal, DARPA has partnered with the University of Hawaii Space Flight Laboratory to record telemetry data for the final flight critical portion, the final critical portion of the flight. University of Hawaii personnel responded rapidly to DARPA's request for assistance, configuring and deploying a remote receiving system within just a few days a further demonstration of responsive launch capabilities. Now, let's talk about payloads. DARPA Launch Challenge seeks to demonstrate just-in-time payload integration as part of the overall goal for rapid and responsive use of space. In contrast with typical launch campaigns where payload data is given to the launch provider months or even years prior, details of the payloads for Launch 1 were shared with the launch team on January 22nd, just weeks ago. The Launch 1 payload can manifest consists of three CubeSats and one payload that will remain on the rocket's upper stage. The team received the payloads at the launch site where integration with the rocket was finalized.
there's a, a payload that flies on the rocket, and that's why the rocket is, is in business, and that's why they, they build the rocket. What we do is we get the payload from the payload provider, uh, we put it in a box, it's called a pea pod, it's a dispenser, and we make sure that that dispenser fits onto the rocket, and uh, that, that's our job here. On most launches, there, there are multiple payloads that fly, and for each launch, the launch vehicle has to do an individual analysis to make sure that the payload won't break the launch vehicle and the launch vehicle won't break the payload. To enable such, such a paradigm, essentially, you have to have all the payloads show up on time and be ready for flight at the same time, which is very challenging if there's multiple organizations involved who are providing different payloads. We had uh, a pea pod which can fit uh, a 3U CubeSat inside of it, essentially, or 3U worth of CubeSats. Uh, so we had the um, University of South Florida provide half U satellites called uh, the Arky satellites. We also had uh, a satellite called uh, Prometheus provided by the Department of Defense. Uh, and then we have uh, an additional payload that's mounted to the outside of the P-Pod, which again is a, is a unique thing that we're doing here for this challenge. Responsive launch does make things a little more challenging, but that is, that is what, what we do here. We, uh, we embrace challenges and we push limits. We want to be able to integrate things last minute so that we can uh, better enable the, the defense department or whoever needs these resources to have them uh, as, as quickly as possible when they need them. And to do that, you have to be able to respond quickly, integrate at a launch site, do what the mission requires. All the payloads manifested on this DARPA launch challenge, launch one, have favorably completed all interagency and flight safety reviews. The Air Force will provide independent verification of successful orbit insertion and orbit determination and a feasible detection of payload deployment and orbit determination of payloads within 24 hours after launch. DARPA is also working with LEO Labs to provide supplemental detection of post-launch orbit insertion initial orbit determination and, if feasible, detection and orbit determination of payloads following deployment from the launch vehicle upper stage. As we're getting close to the countdown resuming, and the count is now going to move to the T-minus 15-minute mark, after they pick up the count, that is the beginning of the terminal count. We're currently in a hold. We'll be set to pick up the count here shortly, but some key personnel you may hear on the countdown net today include LD, that's the launch director, Chris Thompson. He has final launch authority and is responsible for the safety of overall launch operations. Launch conductor, Chris Hoffman. He oversees and directs launch vehicle operations per the countdown manual with the authority to call hold, recycle, or abort as required. ESO is the engineering support officer, Adam London. He provides overall visibility into operations and to the vehicle. Tango is the vehicle controller who operates the terminal controlling vehicle systems under the direction of the launch conductor. RCO is the range control officer who provides overall management and is responsible for PSCA personnel and operations. And ELWO is the launch weather officer who provides weather briefings and initiates weather balloons, etc. Of course, there are a number of other key console operators, both in Alameda and at PSCA, all working together toward a safe and successful launch. However, Astro's, Astro's approach significantly limits those required to execute launch operations. The launch operations team at Astro Mission Control is composed solely of the handful of personnel in the glass room that you see, with the remainder as observers and engineers not critical to launch operations. This lean team includes controllers overseeing the flight safety system, ground and flight software, radio systems, power, propulsion for the first and upper stages, guidance, navigation and control, and trajectory. The remote team at Kodiak is composed of the pad leader, known as Red Lead, and three other launch pad technicians who would respond if there were a need to troubleshoot any issue at the launch pad. There also are two FAA inspectors who are providing FAA license oversight. So again, the situation right now is that everything is going well on the countdown. The T0 time shifted slightly uh, to avoid the potential of a collision of, with an object in orbit. Uh, launch team has been tracking through their checklist. The water deluge system has been checked and validated to be good. 
The flight termination system checkouts have been performed and everything is go. We're just standing by again after we pick up the count at T minus 15 minutes, we'll be in the terminal count with a final go, no go poll for launch expected at T minus 10 minutes. And everything is performing uh, well today. The rocket seems to be in good shape. Weather is definitely cooperating, far better than it has in the last week at any rate, where we've dodged a couple of blizzards and uh, high winds that would have been a problem for tanking the rocket. We'll be standing by as they uh, prepare to pick up the count. As soon as we know when that will be, we will be sure to pass it on to you. You're looking at a beautiful view of the rocket on its launch pad at Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska, Area 3, ready to begin the mission for the DARPA Launch Challenge today. Again, the launch window opened about three and a half minutes ago. We're in a hold at T minus 15 minutes. This is a three hour launch window, so there's plenty of time today to work through the countdown and to launch Astra's rocket one of three. You're looking at the strong back to the left, which provides support to the rocket as well as a, a means by which fluids and pressure um, lines attach along with electrical to the rocket. Earlier today, the rocket was in a horizontal position, resting on top of the strong back, and it was rolled into place at the launch site where the strong back lifted it vertically into the position you see now on top of the launch cube. Again, just two weeks ago, this was a bare uh, cement pad with nothing there, and Astra and the DARPA team, as well as Pacific Spaceport Complex Alaska, it brought everything that was needed. And here you see a picture as the sun rises earlier today of the Astra rocket moved into the vertical position. Beautiful view with the sun rising in the background. Everything that's being done today is in response to the DARPA launch challenge. DARPA and we're being told that the new T0 time is 1155 a.m. Alaska time, 1255 p.m. Pacific time. So about 20 minutes from now. The DARPA Launch Challenge is uh, an initiative from DARPA to challenge rocket providers to respond quickly with rapid response and flexibility to be able to solve the needs of the military potentially in the future. Unlike traditional rocket programs where missions are planned months and even years in advance, DARPA saw the need for potentially something different, and that's why the DARPA Launch Challenge was created. There were over 50 competitors at the very beginning, around two years ago. It was narrowed down over time. The competitors had to successfully uh, file license applications with the Federal Aviation Administration and with DARPA in order to demonstrate their technical feasibility in solving this challenge. There were three down at the wire, and ultimately Astra is the lone competitor, and they've been working diligently over the last 14 days to get ready for today's launch attempt. We finally have a, a, a good weather forecast. Teams here in Alameda, California, and in Kodiak, Alaska, are prepared and ready. The rocket is on the pad. 
team is working through the final minutes, really, of their count countdown procedure. We're in the T-minus 15-minute hold. Again, when we pick up the count, we will be in the terminal count with the intent to count all the way down to zero unless uh, one of the launch controllers notices some kind of a problem, at which point they would call for a hold. There will be one final poll where launch conductor Chris Hoffman will survey the entire launch team for their uh, capability to launch today. Everyone will say go or no go. If we clear that hurdle at T minus five minutes, we would expect that the range control officer, having verified that everything on the uh, sea and in the air is clear, would give a final green call. And that would be the last uh, call that we would expect where anything could be held unless, once again, there was some kind of a system problem and the team would certainly call a hold if they see something develop before we would get to T0. Again, the new T0 time is 11.55 a.m. Alaska time, 12.55 p.m. Pacific time. Tango, please run GNC self-test. GNC call out complete upon completion. I'm running. Self-test is running. And you can see the countdown clock is at T minus 14 minutes, 33 seconds and counting. At this point, everything is go. Launch conductor Chris Hoffman is stepping through the steps in his countdown manual. At this point, various launch controllers will be asked to verify their systems. Stuff just is passed. Final pressurization of the fuel tank and liquid oxygen tank will occur. Looking live now at the Mission Control Center in Alameda. Launch conductor Chris Hoffman, seated uh, in the upper right on the picture. The launch director, Chris Thompson, is to his right. T minus 13 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Okay, and can you please recycle FTS? 
Alright, Tango, per step 100, please enable FTS and AB1 rocket support cart. We're at T-minus 11 minutes, 51 seconds and counting. We'll be standing by for the final go-no-go no go poll for launch within the next couple of minutes. Everything proceeding normally. Copy that. And We're hearing that uh, flight termination active. system is enabled. Confirmed. One set helium to full. Filling to full. Tango in fuel for operate, toggle full. Tango, please open and inspect the launch machine. T minus 11 minutes and counting. And Tango, in the launch machine, please set a T0 time of 2055000 UTC. Launch conductor Chris Hoffman confirming launch time, 11.55 a.m. Alaska time. He's giving the time in UTC, universal time, which is the clock you see in the upper left on your screen. Ten minutes, 20 seconds. Standing by for Chris Hoffman's launch conductor poll, the final poll before launch. T minus nine minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Everything is go at this point to begin the DARPA launch challenge. Astra's rocket one of three stands poised to launch from Kodiak, Alaska in just over nine minutes from now. T-minus 8 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, per step 106, this is the poll for tank pressurization and launch. After this point, any system issue must be called as a three-word hold. If there are no concerns for flight, call go. Otherwise, call no go. Red lead. Go. FTS. FTS, let's go. Delphin. Go. Ether. Go. Odin. Go. Inco. Inco is go. Power. Go. Ace. Go. Telem. Go. AVI. Go. Spartan. Go. ESO. Go. GNC. GNC is go. FAO. Go. Ben. Go. Tango. Go. Safety. Go. LD. LD is go. LC is go as well. Delphin, please provide Tango with flight engine sequences so that Tango can load them to slot zero on all controllers. T minus seven minutes, RCO eight LC seconds and counting. 
RCO, go. Are you go for us to move? I will still ask you for final authorization in about two minutes. We are still go. Copy, thank you. Launch conductor Chris Hoffman completing his poll. And he also was uh, launch controller, launch Anytime conductor launch. Chris Hoffman conducted his poll, verified that the range control officer continues to be go. T minus six minutes, 29 seconds and counting. Everything is going like clockwork. Counting down to a T0 time of 11.55 a.m. Alaska time and 12.55 p.m. Pacific time. Astra's rocket one of three, ready to launch DARPA's launch challenge today. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds and counting, and we'll be standing by for the range control officer's final range green and launch authorization call short. engine sequence for today. T minus Five minutes and counting. Delphin confirmed GSE igniter system ready for launch. GSE igniter system is ready for launch. FTS confirm logic and master enable on AFTU. And work. Confirmation that the five igniters under yeah, the five yeah, engines AFT on the first stage rocket AFT checks are ready to launch. Flight. Tango verify ready aside from tank press. Tango's ready. Tango deactivate the following machines if they are not already deactivated. Ox 4 operate. T minus four minutes and counting. Ox one OV three oh one upper fill. Down. Ox one OV two oh one first. Down. Ox one OV one oh two return. Down. Ox one OV one oh one one hundred B one oh one B. Down. Fuel four operate. The fuel machines are all off. Copy. A V one radios. Off. A V one rocket support card. Off. Confirm. Zero stop purging is running. Confirmed. AB1 polling is running. Helium. Helium machines are still active. We're good on polling in helium. BB1 first stage power, upper stage power, and PDB should still be running. Confirmed. RCO looking for final range green and launch authorization. Range is green. You're authorized to launch. Copy. Tango enable launch. Good news. Enable. ROS, verify range. Launch is enabled. LM. The range is green. The rocket is go. T minus Verified. two minutes, 55 seconds and counting. Control room, if you require RF data, be prepared to switch over Grafana pages. And FSO, please prepare to issue option command at T plus one, two, zero seconds. Please call out on countdown at event. FSO cops. Reminder, control room, respond to any three-word hold from this point forward with an immediate hold regardless of source. T minus two minutes, 15 seconds.
One minute, 50 seconds to launch. Launch conductor Chris Hoffman calling out the time. Less than 75 seconds to launch. And we have a hold call. Standing by for more information. Holding at 52 seconds. 53 seconds. We'll stand by for more information. Again, we have a three hour launch window today. Depending upon the nature of the hold, it's possible that the countdown could be recycled. Again, we'll stand by for more information. The hold was called by Guidance, Navigation, and Control Officer. The acronym is GNC, and the GNC officer ensures that the weather and wind trajectory information is up to date, properly loaded, meets flight criteria. They also are uh, involved in the trajectory of the rocket. Again, we have no idea at this point what prompted the hold, but we are in a hold at T minus 53 seconds. Launch window today extends till 2.30 p.m. Alaska time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Launch conductor Chris Hoffman asking Tango to verify that the rocket is still on ground power, ground support equipment power, GSE, rather than uh, internal battery power, which it will switch to slightly uh, closer to launch time. Again, uh, resetting where we are. We are currently in a hold at T minus 53 seconds, a hold that was called by the guidance, navigation, and control officer. We are not yet sure of uh, why we're in the hold. The procedure would call for potentially recycling to the T minus 15 minute mark if a decision were made to try another launch attempt today. The launch window again extends till 2.30 p.m. Alaska time and 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. We're standing by for more details.
You're looking at a live shot from Kodiak, Alaska, where Astra's rocket one of three standing by for a launch today to complete its mission as part of the DARPA launch challenge. We've counted down successfully to within a minute, but at T-minus 53 seconds, a hold was called by the GNC officer, Guidance, Navigation, and Control. And here at the Astra headquarters in Alameda, California, where Mission Control is located, launch controllers and managers are discussing their options at this point. Again, the option could be that whatever the nature of the uh, issue is can be resolved and we can recycle the countdown clock back to T-minus 15 minutes and try again today. We don't know that yet for sure, but we'll stand by for more information. You're now looking at a, a shot from underneath the five engines on the Delphin first stage. The camera mounted in the launch cube at Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska, Area 3 launch pad. This is where all the action will begin when we finally launch. The five rockets uh, standing by, ready to go. Here again is Astra Mission Control in Alameda, California. The launch director, Chris Thompson, is in the upper right. To his left is launch conductor, Chris Hoffman. Other launch controllers in the room with them, as well as in the adjacent room, and some in Kodiak, Alaska. Teams are talking through what their options are. Recapping where we are today, we are uh, looking at the Astra Rocket 1 of 3 on the launch pad in Kodiak, Alaska, ready to launch today as part of the DARPA Launch Challenge. Countdown was proceeding well up until the T minus 53 second mark when a hold was called by GNC the Guidance, Navigation, and Control Officer. We don't know the nature of uh, the reason for the hold at this point, and the countdown net, which we have been sharing with you, is very quiet right now as the teams are discussing offline what their options are. One of the options is that, depending upon what the issue was, they could recycle the countdown clock to T minus 15 minutes and we could begin the countdown once again. Again, that is uh, entirely up to the launch teams as they work through the issue and determine what the next course of action will be. The launch window provides plenty of time to do so. It extends till 2.30 p.m. Alaska time and 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. Hello, this is the DARPA Launch Challenge, and as you've been following, the Astra rocket on the launch pad is still on the launch pad. It, uh, it is sitting there because we're in the middle of a hold that was called at T-minus 53 seconds, and while the flight controller's launch control team are evaluating what the issue is and determining whether or not we can possibly recycle the count and try again today, we wanted to take you back to show you all that's been happening because this is really an example of how difficult things are. The DARPA launch challenge was created to enable launch companies the opportunity to show what they could do to be able to respond rapidly and flexibly to launch on a quick notice from virtually anywhere. And Astra has risen to the challenge just two weeks ago the launch pad that you're looking at here was a bare piece of concrete and in that time they have brought the rocket and all the ground support equipment and done everything it takes to try to launch. Uh, we would like to show you exactly what's been happening here over the last two weeks in order to bring us where we are today.
going in that weather was going to be problematic. You had everybody here. You don't give up on a possible launch opportunity. Yeah, I think the rocket was ready. The winds were not looking good. The trigger lightning, thick clouds were not looking good, but always useful to count because you never know what's going to happen. We had a wet dress rehearsal yesterday that went pretty well. And were it not for weather, we'd probably be on our way to orbit right now. And as you can see, the DARPA launch challenge really is quite challenging. And with the uncharacteristically unique bad weather that's been be, uh, that's hit the folks in Alaska this week, it uh, has really pushed things back even further than than you would expect. The DARPA launch challenge, though, was created in order to try to push folks along to be able to come up with this capability. And dangling out there is the potential for a two million dollar prize if. Astra is able to successfully launch payloads to low Earth orbit today. And let's, uh, right now, talk a little bit about what the payloads are. There's a, a payload that flies on the rocket, and that's why the rocket is, is in business, and that's why they, they build the rocket. What we do is we get the payload from the payload provider, uh, we put it in a box, it's called the P-Pod, it's a dispenser, and we make sure that that dispenser fits onto the rocket, and uh, that, that's our job here. On most launches, there, there are multiple payloads that fly, and for each launch, the launch vehicle has to do an individual analysis to make sure that the payload won't break the launch vehicle, and the launch vehicle won't break the payload. To enable such, such a paradigm, essentially, you have to have all the payloads show up on time and be ready for flight at the same time, which is very challenging if there's multiple organizations involved who are providing different payloads. We had uh, a P-Pod, which can fit uh, a 3U CubeSat inside of it, essentially, or 3U worth of CubeSats. Uh, so we had um, the University of South Florida provide half U satellites called uh, the Archie satellites. We also had uh, a satellite called uh, Prometheus provided by the Department of Defense. Uh, and then we have uh, an additional payload that's mounted to the outside of the P-Pod, which again is a, is a unique thing that we're doing here for this challenge. Responsive launch does make things a little more challenging, but that is, that is what, what we do here. We, uh, we embrace challenges and we push limits. We want to be able to integrate things last minute so that we can uh, better enable the, the Defense Department or whoever needs these resources to have them uh, as, as quickly as possible when they need them. And to do that, you have to be able to respond quickly, integrate at a launch site, do what the mission requires. Once again, you're looking live at a shot of the Astra rocket one of three on the launch pad at Pacific Space Coast Complex, Alaska. We are currently at, in a hold at T minus 53 seconds. We were counting down for a launch today when the uh, guidance navigation and control officer called for a hold. Astra managers along with DARPA and the launch control team are looking at data at this point, reviewing where things stand, looking into the potential whether or not the countdown can be picked back up again today. The procedures are written such that if you uh, have an issue that is uh, something you can overcome, you can reset the launch countdown clock to T minus 15 minutes and move right down again and launch. And given today's extended launch window, that is a possibility. The launch window goes till 2.30 p.m. Alaska time and 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. We don't have insight into uh, exactly what the discussions are at this point. At some point though, they will, uh, you see launch conductor Chris Hoffman in the shot that you're looking at now in the Astra Mission Control in Alameda and he would come up on the countdown net and let all of us know what the next course of action will be. So we remain in a hold at T minus 53 seconds standing by for more information.
Hello, and thank you for following along with us at the DARPA Launch Challenge, where today Astra is attempting to launch its rocket one of three uh, to make things right with the DARPA Launch Challenge. Uh, the countdown was proceeding fine until 53 seconds before the planned liftoff when the guidance navigation and control launch uh, controller called for a hold. And here to give us maybe a little bit of insight and to fill us in on how things have been going is Todd Master, the DARPA Launch Challenge Program Manager. Thank you for joining us, Todd. Thanks for having me, Mike. What can you tell us about where we are right now? Sure, so we had a, uh, we had a really smooth countdown. Things went really well. We had, um, during, during fueling operations, we had uh, a little bit of a slowdown in doing that, but um, nothing unexpected from that front. Uh, we opted to uh, push back our T0 a little bit. Um, I think, as you probably explained, we had a COLA, uh, or sort of a conjunction warning, about four minutes into our window for the space station. Um, so we pushed that T0 back about 10 minutes to give us a time to finish fueling, uh, time to avoid the space station conjunction and set our new T0. Um, we got through that count, and things went very smoothly at just under T minus one minute. The GNC engineer, guidance navigation control uh, lead, called a hold based on some data that they saw that they wanted to go take a closer look at. You know, typically during a countdown, you've got a whole series of, of leads who are making sure that everything that's happened up until that point um, are proceeding as normally as they would expect. All right, so, so that, uh, that lead saw some data that uh, was, was, I would say, off nominal, um, caused them to go back and look at uh, what might have been happening with that. Uh, so that, went, that caused to go into a hold position. We have a three hour window for today. Uh, the vehicle can remain in a fuel position and, and condition for a considerable portion of that. Um, in the meantime, uh, while we were in our hold condition, this is part of the excitement of launches. There's a lot of systems all working simultaneously that all have to kind of be working simultaneously and in conjunction. Um, we have an FTS transmitter on the range that is the sort of thing that provides the uh, termination system for the vehicle in the event that there's, there's an anomaly in flight. Um, Pre-launch, we have two of those set up that are called omni antennas. Uh, those sort of radiate equally in every direction and the vehicle receives that signal. Um, while we were in the hold, we saw that the voltage on one of those was dropping off. Um, the team basically took advantage, the team at uh, the spaceport took advantage of that time being in the hold to go swap out that, that FTS transmitter, um, and that's been accomplished. So the range went from green at the beginning of the count to red, and now back to green. Okay. Uh, more excitement when uh, the Astra team basically was looking at we might be an extended hold, uh, and they knew that the range was red for 30 minutes while that swap out happened. They decided to take advantage of that and go in and reconfigure the helium pressurization system on the vehicle. That's the system that basically makes sure our helium bottle on the vehicle is pressurized for launch, which is required. Um, in an extended hold, we, uh, it's great to have a, an ability to have that at, at the maximum condition that you would want it. So the team went back in. Um, they were able to they have a safe entry procedure for the pad. It's been pre-coordinated. Uh, you have to think about that when a vehicle's in a fuel condition, you want to make sure that you've got a, a pre-approved procedure, you've got a team who's trained, um, and that you can get in there safely. So after sending their folks within about two minutes, they had the helium balls reconfigured, so they have done that uh, to maximize their potential to launch again within the window should they resolve their, their GNC issue. Okay, that's very helpful information, Todd. I appreciate that. Um, sure. So we, we don't know yet whether or not they'll be able to resolve the GNC issue, but yeah. as you said, we have a, a long launch window today. That's true, that's true. So the team is still looking at the data. Um, I don't have an answer yet as to whether or not they're going to recycle, which means if they, if they decide that what they saw in the data was something that's acceptable for launch, uh, we'll take the count back to T minus 15 minutes, which is our planned recycle point, and we'll start back from T minus 15 minutes and resume the count. Uh, if they decide that it's something that requires um, more fixes that can be done within the next couple minutes or the next couple hours, uh, they would opt to scrub for the day. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll stay tuned to find out. The launch window does extend to 2.30 p.m. East, uh, Alaska time and 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. So uh, once again, we'll, we'll stay tuned and we'll be passing on any information that we get to you right here. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, and thank you again for joining us at the DARPA Launch Challenge. We are here today at, at, at the Astra headquarters in Alameda, California, tracking the launch attempt by Astra in response to the DARPA Launch Challenge. 
It's been a crazy two weeks getting to this point. Astra has responded very well, moved the rocket and the ground support equipment to Kodiak, Alaska in preparation for today's launch. Uh, the launch window began at 11.30 a.m. Alaska time. We attempted launch about uh, 10 to 15 minutes into that launch window. Everything was continuing to go well until 53 seconds before liftoff when the guidance navigation and control engineer called for a hold. Uh, we've since learned that there is some data that the launch team needs to review related to guidance navigation and control, or GNC. They are in the process of looking through that, um, and we'll see how things go. We do have an extended launch window today. It expires at 2.30 p.m. Alaska time, 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. However, we would need to recycle the count at the T-minus 15-minute mark by 2.15 Alaska time, 3.15 Pacific time in order to make today's launch window. Uh, that's pretty much what we know at this point. Teams are working very hard to ensure that everything is safe before they give a go for uh, launch attempt. We don't know whether or not uh, it's possible, but we will certainly stay here and we will let you know as soon as we have some more information. The Astra 103 rocket is poised on the launch pad in Kodiak, Alaska at Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska, ready for the launch attempt whenever the launch engineers deem it possible. We'll let you know as soon as we have more. Thank you once again for joining us and we'll go back to live pictures of the rocket on the launch pad. Welcome back to the DARPA Launch Challenge. We are here at the Astra headquarters in Alameda, California, and we just wanted to update you on the current status. There is not a whole lot of new information. We were counting down to a launch opportunity at uh, Kodiak, Alaska of the Astra 1 of 3 rocket that was uh, originally scheduled at the opening of the launch window at 11.30 a.m. Alaska time, and then it moved to uh, 11.54. 5 a.m. Alaska time, 12.55 p.m. Pacific time. And we were counting down to that. Everything was going well until 53 seconds before liftoff. The guidance navigation and control officer called for a hold based on data, and uh, the countdown held. We have remained in that hold now uh, ever since then as teams pour over the data and try to get a better understanding before they would feel comfortable attempting a launch again today. Fortunately, we have an extended launch window today that extends to 2.30 p.m. Alaska time, 3.30 p.m. Pacific time, and at that point uh, they would be able to uh, make another launch attempt 15 minutes before that. So we would have to pick up the count by 2.15 Alaska time, 3.15 Pacific time in order to make the end of the launch window. So we're a little under 30 minutes from then, and uh, we wanted to make sure that you understood where, where things are. We hope to have an update for you soon, but for right now, we continue to be in a hold at 53 seconds. If we're able to recycle and try again today, the countdown clock will be reset to T minus 15 minutes, and then we would begin another countdown attempt. For now, uh, we remain in the hold. We have under 30 minutes uh, to make a decision whether we're going to go today or not. We're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that everything goes well for Astra, and we'll let you know as soon as we have some more information. Thank you very much. Welcome to the DARPA Launch Challenge, and as you may have heard, about three minutes ago, Astra launch conductor Chris Hoffman on the Countdown Net confirmed that we are scrubbed for today. So the uh, launch attempt is no longer possible for today. In the next several minutes, we are uh, working to bring you some interviews with Astra leadership and with Todd Master, the DARPA Launch Challenge Program Manager, to tell us more about what's going on and, and put it all into context. So we will be back with uh, those interviews for you shortly. Thank you again.
Hello and welcome again to the DARPA Launch Challenge. Joining us right now is Astra co-founder and chief executive officer, Chris Kemp. Chris, thank you very much for spending time with us. We had uh, kind of hoped that things would be different when we sat down to talk to you today. <laughs> it, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, you guys really uh, did an amazing job over the last two weeks, Good starting off with a bare launch pad and bringing all of your rocket and ground support equipment to uh, Kodiak, Alaska, made it down to 53 seconds out of two weeks. It's just an amazing job. Thank you. Yeah. Um, congratulations on that. I wish that uh, you'd been able to make it a little bit further, but uh, is there anything you can tell us about today from your perspective? Well, I think that there's a lot that needs to be right before we uh, proceed with the launch, and uh, there's a lot of potential outcomes here. Uh, where we wouldn't have the opportunity to fly the rocket and learn as much as, as possible. And we saw some data that concerned us, and we decided that it would be better to uh, scrub the launch and try again another day, uh, because if uh, the data uh, was correct, it could have definitely caused a problem with the flight. And you know, fundamentally, safety is our top priority, and uh, winning the challenge would have been fantastic today, yep. but uh, our objective really is to reach orbit in as few flights as possible, so we really want to use this rocket, and we want to get out there again when we know everything is, is, is perfect, and unfortunately, that wasn't today. Well, you know, it will be for you soon. I know uh, you have an amazing facility here. Adam London took me on a tour. Uh, rocket it's two of three and three of three are well underway. The factory, yep. well underway. So uh, it's going to be a bright future. And, and it's uh, I really think, you know, everything that you guys did in preparation for this shows that it can be done yep. and that you nearly made it. Yeah, likewise. Our team worked really hard over the past few months. Um, many weekends and, and long nights uh, went into getting uh, the system ready for this launch uh, attempt today. And uh, there was a lot of great collaboration between Astra and DARPA and uh, also the other regulatory agencies that made it possible for us to show up at a launch site we'd never launched from and uh, less than two weeks later be in a position to conduct an orbital launch. Well, congratulations, and uh, we look forward to hearing more about the success in the future. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris. So recapping what happened today, the launch window for Astra's Rocket 1 of 3 began at 11.30 a.m. Alaska time, 12.30 p.m. Pacific time. It's a three-hour launch window. Uh, at the beginning of the countdown, there was a little bit of a, a delay in getting started, and we were targeting a liftoff at 11.55 a.m. Alaska time, 12.55 p.m. Pacific time. And the count uh, was going quite well. Everything counted down to the 53-second mark, at which point a hold was called. And as Chris explained, there was data there that showed them that it was unsafe to continue. And so they did the prudent thing. Uh, they called it a day, even though it meant that uh, they were no longer going to uh, effectively win the DARPA launch challenge. And joining us right now is Todd Master, the DARPA launch challenge project manager. Todd, I know that's kind of a disappointing day for them. Um, but, you know, you've learned a lot from, from starting this challenge and, and seeing it through the fruition. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, you obviously heard the update from Chris as to, to how things went today. Um, you know, it, it concluded with, uh, with a scrub of the countdown. However, the, the rest of the count went uh, astoundingly well. We really ran into no issues through the countdown. Um, and I think what we've shown over the last two weeks or so since we arrived were a lot of the goals of the challenge which, which we met. Um, so, you know, showed that we were able, that our competitor was able to bring a system from a flexibility standpoint um, to a pad that they had never launched to orbit from before, um, set up and delivered all that infrastructure in, in less than two weeks and set it up on the pad. And when I say infrastructure, it means fueling tanks, um, you know, pressurization, uh, launch mount, I, I mean, just bare concrete pad to being able to launch a rocket in two weeks. And, and that's pretty amazing. Um, but it was, a t it was a hard challenge. We, we set it uh, to be... Um, uh, achievable, but 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 certainly DARPA holds a bar for really uh, hard tasks that we ask competitors to do. So they got almost there, almost made it to the finish line, um, just didn't quite make it. Um, but you know we learn a lot from these challenges, and, and we think that even being able to get to the point we got to will demonstrate to folks that um, that this is something that is right on the cusp of possible, um, and we we anticipate that in the very near future we'll be able to see uh, those approaches succeed. I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, this has been a, a, a great challenge. 
um, it's been it's been uh, a great experience, and uh, we've all learned a lot from it, and really appreciate it, Todd. Thank you. Yeah, I I, I really hope that um, I, we wish Astor the best of luck in the future. Um, I think it has been, um, you know, while I while I can't be their uh, cheerleader because I'm their referee, we <laughs> we uh, we certainly look forward to their future successes and how we can integrate really responsive and flexible launch into um, national military strategy. Excellent. Okay, Todd. Thank you very much. Todd Master, the DARPA Launch Challenge Program Manager. And we want to thank you for the time that you have spent with us over the last week, giving you daily updates, following all the progress that Astra has been making, that DARPA has been making, as uh, the teams work together to overcome many, many challenges, some of which were foreseen and others that were not, including weather, Mother Nature uh, bringing a blizzard and then more heavy snow and winds to the area that uh, caused some delays, pushed us right up to the limit on the last day today of the DARPA launch challenge, and we made it almost to the very end, except for a technical issue, which happens with space flight. Space flight is hard. It uh, is something that you try to work through, but as Chris Kemp said, in the end, the important thing is to be safe. So. Uh, Astra will continue to fly. DARPA will continue with its challenges. This is a very exciting challenge. We again want to thank you very much for uh, joining us over the past week and take good care.